Hey guys, welcome to this new episode. A quick note before we start this. Did you know that the Ethereum network has a lot going for it? It's decentralized, reliable, supports smart contracts written in a programming language familiar to many crypto developers, and is home to a thriving decentralized finance industry. However, Ethereum is also slow and expensive to use and will only remain so if users opt to move to another blockchain, like Solana, Phantom, or Avalanche, or until planned Ethereum upgrades speed things up within the next couple of years. While we wait for the Ethereum upgrades to catch up, a new fix for the scaling solutions is starting to pop up. These are pieces of software that sit on top of the base layer of a blockchain, in this case, Ethereum, to speed things up. Arbitrum is one such scaling solution, and it's become a popular venue for Ethereum users to complete their transactions. Today, we would be looking into the Arbitrum project. We would explain what it does, how it works, some key setbacks, and its tokenomics. But before we dive into Arbitrum, guys, please like this video and help us get it to as many people as possible. And if you like tech and Web3 content, then subscribe to this channel. We have amazing videos you would love to see. So. Without further ado, let's get right into it. What exactly is Arbitrum? It's like the superhero of the Ethereum blockchain. It swoops in to make everything faster, cheaper, and more efficient. Think of it like the Flash, but for blockchain transactions. While Ethereum manages a mere 14 transactions per second, Arbitrum races ahead at 40,000 transactions per second. Transactions cost several dollars to complete on Ethereum, while they cost about two cents on Arbitrum. Plus, Arbitrum also supports the Ethereum Virtual Machine, or EVM, meaning that Ethereum DeFi developers can integrate their decentralized applications, also known as dApps, with Arbitrum without having to make any modifications. Furthermore, Arbitrum was created by off-chain labs and the company has raised about $120 million in a Series B funding round in September 2021. So, you might be wondering how Arbitrum works to achieve this speed. Well, think of it this way. Arbitrum is like a secret underground tunnel that connects to the Ethereum main net. This tunnel is called a rollup, and it allows for thousands of transactions to be processed at lightning speed. To put it into perspective, Imagine you're trying to buy a ticket to a sold-out concert. The Ethereum mainnet is like the line of people waiting to buy tickets, and it can take forever to get out to the front. But with Arbitrum's roll-up tunnel, it's like you have your own VIP entrance. You get your ticket in no time, and you're ready to rock out. But wait, what is roll-up? A roll-up is a type of data compression technique for blockchain transactions. It involves rolling up transactions into a single transaction. The benefit of this is that a blockchain only needs to process a single transaction, the rolled up one, instead of confirming each individual transaction contained within the rollup. This saves time. Since multiple transactions are confirmed at once, you don't have to wait until the blockchain gets around to your transaction. And in return, this saves money, since the blockchain only has to confirm the one transaction. If this is still confusing, let's use an analogy to explain it. Think of a roll-up technique as a baker who needs to make a large batch of cookies. Instead of baking one cookie at a time, which would take forever, the baker decides to use a rolling pin to make a long sheet of cookie dough. Then, the baker cuts the sheet into smaller pieces and bakes them all at once in the oven. Now, imagine that each piece of cookie dough represents a transaction on the blockchain, and the oven is the network that processes the transaction. The traditional way of processing transactions on the blockchain is like baking one cookie at a time, which is slow and inefficient. But with the roll-up technique, it's like using the rolling pin to make a large batch of transactions all at once, which speeds up the process significantly. In essence, a roll-up technique allows multiple transactions to be bundled together and submitted to the network as a single transaction. This makes the process faster and more efficient, while still maintaining the integrity and security of the blockchain. 
And according to Arbitrum, any transactions confirmed through this process are rubber stamped with the any trust guarantee. This is when all the validators agree with the validity of transactions contained within a blockchain. These validators stake Ethereum before they can confirm transactions. By putting money on the line, they are incentivized to act honestly. <laughs> all right, now let's slow this down a bit. <laughs> can there be a potential problem with using Arbitrum? Well, there is no technology or concept without some loophole. First off, rollups are still a relatively new concept, so there's still always the chance that something could go wrong. It's like trying out a new recipe for the first time. You might accidentally add too much salt or forget an ingredient, resulting in a less than perfect dish. Another potential problem is the issue of data synchronization. Rollups work by aggregating multiple transactions into a single batch which means that some data may not be fully synced with the Ethereum main net. It's like trying to organize a group of rowdy kids. Some might not listen or follow the rules, resulting in chaos and confusion. Lastly, there's the question of network congestion. Rollups can help alleviate some of the congestion on the Ethereum network, but they're not a silver bullet. If there's a sudden urge and demand for transactions, the network could still become congested and slow. It's like trying to navigate through a crowded concert venue. Even with a VIP pass, you might still get stuck in a bottleneck at some point. However, despite these potential setbacks, rollups are still a promising concept with the potential to revolutionize the blockchain industry. But before we round up, let's take a quick look at the Arbitrum token. The Arbitrum token is a native token of the Arbitrum network. It's like the currency that powers the engine of the Arbitrum train. Without it, the train can't go anywhere. One of the primary use cases of the Arbitrum token is as a means of payment for using the Arbitrum network. It's like buying a ticket to ride the train. You need to have some of that sweet, sweet Arbitrum token to pay for the privilege of using the network. But the fun doesn't stop there. The Arbitrum token can also be used for staking. Staking is like being a conductor on the Arbitrum train. You help keep the network running smoothly and earn rewards for your efforts. And just like how a conductor needs to be properly trained and certified, stakers need to hold a certain amount of Arbitrum tokens to participate in the network. But wait, there's more. The Arbitrum token can also be used for governance. Governance is like being a passenger on the train who also gets to vote where the train should go next. Arbitrum token holders have a say in important network decisions, such as changes to the protocol or upgrades to the system. Arbitrum has a total supply of 10 billion tokens, with a current circulating supply of 1.27 billion tokens, and it is currently selling at 1.17 USD with a market cap above $1.4 billion. And guys, kindly note that this is not financial advice, but for educational purposes only. All right, let's end this video on this note. Arbitrum, just like every other rollup network, like Boba and Loopring, is surely doing us great service. But what happens when the Ethereum upgrade catches up with speed? At the same time, Arbitrum's main task is to make things easier for Ethereum users. So I kept asking why they actually put up or even need a token. And hey, I'm not concluding it yet. They will have their reasons, but please do let me know what you think about this open-ended question and Arbitrum as a whole in the comment section below. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel. And please don't forget to turn on your notifications to get notified each time we post a video on this channel. Thank you for watching. I will be seeing you in the next episode.